Hey guys, my name is Christopher Mayer. I'm the founder and CEO of Acumen Coffee. Welcome back to our Soil to Cup series. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Today's short video will be about why and how to V60. So I'm gonna quickly explain why we encourage flow through brew methods. I'm gonna provide a brief overview of some of the equipment we use. And I'm also gonna show you how to brew using the V60 method. Uh, our goal is for you to find value in our message, uh, to encourage you to become your own barista, and hopefully use the information to enjoy better coffee more often. Uh, just a small tip, there are companies out there trying to charge you for this type of information. Uh, they'll call it an academy or a training session. Just keep in mind that you can find all of this information online for free. So don't be fooled and waste hundreds of dollars on something you can train yourself on. Besides, when you teach yourself how to do it from scratch, it's always better. So why do this? We have three reasons. Primarily, it's to have a better cup of coffee more often. Once you discover it, it gets really hard to go back. Second, the specialty coffees normally have healthier characteristics. For example, some are organic or they have a higher concentration of antioxidants and or they are free of contaminants. Um, we believe this is particularly important because it's part of Acumen's mission um, to encourage healthier food consumption. Lastly is bang for buck. Specialty coffee isn't cheap, so if you learn how to make a better cup of coffee and experience the cupping notes you were intended to, then the money you spent on your choice of specialty coffee suddenly becomes money well spent. Point is, you can enjoy a more balanced cup of coffee if you use quality brew methods. Uh, there are brew methods like the AeroPress or the Pour Over, the Chemex, the French Press, Arabic, Turkish, Siphon, uh, there's drip brew, just to name a few. Uh, so these brew methods help you to accomplish better coffee through extraction. Um, the high quality brew methods help you to extract more of the tasty flavors from the roasted coffee that you just purchased. The reasons we're able to do this is because the higher quality brew methods give you more control over the variables that impact the way the coffee brews. There are seven variables that we would like you to keep top of mind. The first is temperature. Remember that when you brew coffee, you're cooking coffee. You want to be mindful of burning it with water that's too hot or undercooking it. Just like when you make your favorite meal, the amount of heat and how it transfers are very important. Uh, depending on the type of coffee you're using, anything between 195 and 210 degrees Fahrenheit will work. I aim for 205 to 206 with our coffee. The second is water, the type of water you use. Um, that's also really important. I'll get to this more in a little bit. Water flow is also really important. That's the third thing. How fast you pour impacts uh, concentration, extraction, and taste. Uh, the fourth is particle size. The grounds will control the flow rate when you brew. That's something uh, that you should be keeping in mind as well. The water to the coffee ratio, that's the fifth thing. Logically, how you know how much coffee you have in there is going to dictate how strong your coffee is. The sixth is time. I think that's self-explanatory. And the seventh is, and more importantly, the quality of green coffee that's used. This includes how fresh it is and when using coffee that has been harvested more recently starts to become highly relevant. Remember that green coffee has an ideal shelf life of about 12 months. After that, it starts to lose some of its aroma and flavor qualities. Um, once you roast it, I honestly wouldn't use coffee that's aged beyond four weeks. Um, you can just tell the difference and it tends to lose some of its vibrancy and taste and smell. Um, quick quick uh, fact, in general, regulation asks for six months of expiration from when the green coffee is roasted. Um, so keep in mind that when you use older green coffees that are marketed as roasted recently, even though these were roasted recently, you can change the fact that what was roasted is in fact old. Um, using older harvested coffees will make it harder to extract some of the cupping notes you might be looking for when you brew. So make sure that uh, when you're buying uh, coffee, it's from a recent harvest and you'll gain confidence that the roasted coffee you're using is actually fresh, not just marketed as fresh. Uh, also know that most companies are trying to convince you otherwise and have been notoriously successful at fooling you. Many coffee companies use roasting to hide age and low quality. 
And guys, don't be a sucker. Just take a moment to look more into product descriptions and how things are marketed. If the crop year isn't there, it's probably for a reason, and it's probably because they're using an older green coffee. Older green coffees are cheaper per pound and better for financial margins, which increases profit. Take a look, keep what we're highlighting in mind, and make your own decision. Uh, if you decide that you don't care, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Just know that there's fresher coffee available to you and that these companies are trying to convince you otherwise and how, you, how fresh it is is actually really important. It does make a difference. Uh, so from the seven variables that I just mentioned, there are three main subtleties that we want you to keep top of mind. All the variables play an important role in your ability to brew a better cup of coffee, but the following three are the most important. The first is water chemistry. All drinking waters carry a multitude of minerals, including bicarbonates, magnesium, and calcium. When it comes to coffee, however, the basic rule of thumb is that soft water has low levels of calcium and bicarbonates, and using it will give you an acidic cup of coffee. Basically, it'll taste really sour. Um, hard water has high levels of calcium and bicarbonates, which will buffer or neutralize some of the flavorsome acids that come in the coffee, and it'll produce a chalky cup of coffee. Um, ideally, you wanna be somewhere in between. We use distilled water, not only for its balanced pH, but also to preserve our equipment. Um, the result is a great tasting cup of coffee though. Um, however, I don't expect you to use distilled water every time. Um, but what you can do is test water at home or use filtered water and you will see a noticeable difference. The second subtlety is grind size and size consistency. Look, some thought leadership believes that finer grinds will extract the most flavors. A different school of thought believes that coarser grinds are the appropriate size for grounds and that heat and water flow will be sufficient to extract what you want from the bean. However, what you can rely on is grind size consistency because it controls your flow rate. Uh, you don't want the water to flow too quickly, nor do you want the poured water to flow too slowly. Ultimately, I would advise you to always use a good grinder so you can make sure that your coffee grounds are always consistent in size. Um, you can select a grind based on the brew equipment you're using. You can tweak it to your taste and just be mindful of how fast the water flows through the coffee grades. The third is freshness and quality of coffee. As I just explained, make sure you're using a coffee that's of high quality and that's truly fresh. That's your bottom line. A fresh crop and a fresh roast are the way to go. Remember, you can poorly brew a high quality coffee and get an okay cup of coffee. You can also perfectly brew an inferior coffee and all you're gonna get is a perfectly brewed cup of terrible coffee. Uh, what you brew and how you brew need to be aligned always. I'm going to quickly walk you through the V60 equipment I'll be using in this video. Uh, this V60 is manufactured by a company called Hario in Japan. I think it's an awesome setup and uh, from all the different brew methods I mentioned and have tried, I think this method uh, extracts the most flavors from the brew as long as you do it right. Uh, you can get this set on Amazon or your favorite cooking store for around 23 bucks. It includes the brewer, uh, it includes the carafe, it includes uh, a scoop, a little scoop, a black cap with a CF, and some filters as well. Uh, I think it's incredibly worth it, and I recommend you guys check it out. So look, don't worry, I'm gonna be providing uh, links to the products in, um, in our in our blog. The V60 is unique because the brewer has uh, some curved ribs that help to better circulate water flow and to maximize coffee extraction. It's got a cone shape that's at 60 degrees, uh, which adds some depth. Um, so you don't have to add more coffee to create more depth. Uh, and there's a, there's a large single hole here at the bottom, which helps to create the ideal water flow for your brew. Uh, there are plenty of different methods uh, you can use. I've tried many of them and I feel that the V60 actually um, extracts the most flavor. Nonetheless, I encourage everyone to explore and find the methods they like the most. Uh, the next item is the Barista Warrior Gooseneck uh, kettle. It's a pour over kettle. Guys, I love this thing. It's stainless steel, it's durable, and it gives you all the control you need. The spout doesn't drip and its thin neck and mouth give you a lot of control over the water flow. Um, 
it has a built-in thermometer uh, so you can make sure that the water temperature is perfect which will help you make sure that you don't burn your coffee um, you can also find this on Amazon for about 40 bucks so with all that control uh, it doesn't break the bank uh, the other thing that I did want to highlight also is the fellow stag which is another different type of kettle this kettle is also fantastic contrary to the barista warrior it's digital and it's electric so it'll heat up water a little quicker and it gives you a little bit of digital scale and it'll hold the temperature at whatever temperature you'd like so if I set it for 205 it'll hold it at 205 and I think that's that's really great and it gives you an additional degree of control however it is worth over 140 so um, just by comparison I think they're both really great and they're both extremely efficient it just depends on the price point and how much control you want to have uh, the next is the digital scale it measures weight and time simultaneously by appearance I know that it looks a little bit techy but I promise that it will make the process so much easier for you uh, and for $17 on Amazon, it's definitely worth uh, the money. Lastly is your grinder. Uh, I won't go into too much detail in this video on the type of grinder to use. All I can say is that investing in a high quality grinder is definitely worth it. You can find a decent electric grinder for a little over $100. There are some hand grinders uh, with great reviews that also get the job done for around 40 bucks. Um, the grinder we use is used for commercial purposes uh, and it can be used for home purposes too. It's the Baratza Forte BG and it's excellent. I love it. But you don't have to invest large sums of money to gain consistency in grounds. Um, Baratza actually has several fantastic electric grinders for home use at affordable price points. So definitely check them out. Um, and then, of course, you want to use high quality specialty coffee because otherwise all this effort is for now is for none. The last piece of equipment that I want you to take a look at and I really recommend is actually is a Yeti coffee mug. This thing is fantastic. Whenever you pour hot coffee in it, you touch the outside of it. You don't even it feels cold to the touch, uh, which tells you just how well insulated this mug is uh, for 24 bucks, I think it's definitely worth it. And it gives you a sizable mug for you to hold a big cup of coffee. Um, and the nice thing also is uh, along with that insulation that you can leave your coffee sitting there for hours, literally, and it'll still be hot when you get back to it. I hate leaving a mug of coffee aside because I didn't get to it and then coming back to it and it's cold. Uh, so. On the contrary, also, it'll preserve cold coffee too. So I think it's definitely worth your time and something to look into. All right, so let's show you how to do the V60. So the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna be doing it at an angle here just to kind of give you a better perspective and give you a better feel of how to uh, approach all of this. Uh, I will be using the Stag kettle. It's a little bit faster, so, um, and I'll be using distilled water as I had mentioned in our video. I'll be using our Acum Medium Roast Whole Bean. Uh, so first things first, I just wanna make sure that we add water to this because it's what takes a little bit of time. I don't try to fill it. There is a maximum fill line over here inside the, the kettle. Make sure you don't pour beyond that because uh, when it boils or it starts to boil, it could uh, come out of the top and burn you. So you wanna make sure that 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 is like that. What I end up doing is I push a little, here, let me move this stuff for you guys. You push the round thing over here, a little light thing comes on over here, and then I set the temperature to 205, 206, and it will automatically start to heat up. The next thing that I like to do is to weigh out 30 grams or 31 grams of oh, smells good. 31 grams of whole bean coffee. It's not a lot. And the reason why I'm doing like 31 grams is you lose about 0 .9, 0 .03, excuse me, 0.03% of browns whenever you grind it. I put a little too much there, but Whatever, it doesn't matter. I put 40 grams here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it over here inside the, the grinder. 
can put this away now. We can put this back over here. And I already have the grinder set to 30 grounds. The nice thing about the grinder is that it will grind only 30 grams of grounds and it'll fall into the hopper down here and then I won't have to worry about weighing that. So it'll be real quick. Done, right? And with that, we're ready to go with the perfect amount of grinds. The grind setting I did fine to medium fine uh, just to make sure that we maximize the most extraction without adding too much without slowing down the water too much first thing we're going to do when the water temperature is at 206 is we're going to warm up the brew equipment and also remove some of the papery taste that comes with the filter and then we're going to toss that out we'll put about 120 grams of hot water in there and then we're gonna do the brew in three different phases, which is the first phase is called the bloom. Bloom allows the CO2 that's inside the coffee grounds to come out of the brew. Second phase is the pour. The pour kind of accelerates the flow rate and allows for maximum extraction. And then the last phase of the brew is called the drawdown, which is a slower pour and just kind of give a play with time and and flow rate to uh, play with extraction and make sure that you finalize the pour and it comes out optimum. Uh, you don't want to take too long because then it tends to get a little bit bitter. Okay, water's to temp. It's at 205. What I'll do is just pour 120 grams of water in here to heat up brew equipment. Doesn't have to be exact. I like to put it back just so it keeps heating, holding temperature, and then we maintain the temperature. I'm gonna, once it's done pouring through, I go ahead and I empty it out. Make sure you tar again. And then all you need to do is pour your grounds in there. Make sure you get to 30. I do a little bit of a well in the middle. And then I hit tar again, and I'm gonna put two grams of water, two grams of water per one gram of coffee. And I'm gonna do that for about 30 to 45 seconds. That's the bloom. Let's see if we can get this a little closer for you guys, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be exact. Again, it goes back on there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shake it. Be mindful that this technique is not our own. We learned it online through various different sources, but it works great. So we definitely wanted to share it with you. You don't wanna go past 40 to 45 seconds. And you can tell that the coffee grounds change color. Next phase is you're gonna pour about 300 grams worth of coffee or 60% of your brew. Just give that coffee ground an opportunity to extract the most and it's a faster pour there we go we're at 302 you're gonna do that for another 30 seconds there'll be a slight overlap between the pour and the drawdown very close to each other and the last part of the phase is the drawdown which is designed to finalize extraction 
maximize flavor. And what I'll do is pour all the way through to 500 grams of water. Always pouring in a circular motion from the inside to the outside. Trying to encourage water flow rate and a circular flow rate. Assist the ribs on the side of the V60 setup. So I'll help it do its job. Also want to make sure that we get some of the grounds off the sides of the filter. We stir it a couple times in each direction, clockwise and counterclockwise. And the last step is simply designed to get as much of those grounds off the sides of the walls of the filter. Again, this is not our technique. This technique actually, to give credit, belongs to a gentleman by the name of James Hoffman. You can find him online as well. And we believe that it is a very efficient and high quality way to extract flavors and notes from your coffee. In the end, what you're going to end up with is a nice flat bed of coffee grounds on this at the bottom of your filter, not many big grounds on the sides of the filter and about 450 milliliters of water or coffee, brewed coffee inside your crop. And with that, your last and final step before pouring is to cap it, swirl it around, Make sure that you mix it all together evenly and pour. I still continue to pour in a circular motion. As I mentioned, you get a nice, complete, full cup of coffee. And in your Yeti. I want Cheers. to thank you for your support. Please check out our website, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. We got a TikTok coming soon. Like, follow, subscribe, share, comment, uh, interact. You know, we want to know your thoughts and get your feedback. Uh, buy Acumen Coffee. You know, it's great coffee. Give us good reviews and, and be an advocate for our community and our message. And we appreciate you and are so thankful to have you and we couldn't do this without you. So we're looking forward to a lot more to come. Again, share this if you found value in it, share it with your family and your friends. That's really the way to help us grow. Uh, and we're looking forward to everything else. So cheers.